everybody. Welcome to the Hallmarkies podcast. And we're really excited. The Way Home is back. Yeah. <laughs> Season two, episode one. And uh, we had such a good time with the show in the last season. And this premiere was a banger. Uh, and uh, it's going to have lots to talk about. It's going to be fun. And I'm film critic Rachel Wagner. Krista Maldonado is here. Hello. I'm so excited to talk The Way Home. This is like yeah. my, my favorite shows ever. Yeah. So. Yeah, this, so this you great. got to cover the red carpet for the premiere. That's pretty fun. Yeah, yeah it was very fun. They had um, <laughs> color changing the Way Home Cups, which was very cool. Oh, nice. <laughs> and the cast is just awesome. Like, they're just genuinely, like, yeah. so it's, it's crazy. Did you get to watch the premiere, or did you just see the red carpet? I did both, yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. yeah it that'd be fun, fun to watch with a crowd. It was. Everyone was like, oh! <gasps> And my dad was next to me and my dad is like a big fan as well because he loves time travel stuff. So half the time he's going like, oh my gosh, oh my God. Oh my God. And the end, yeah. especially, he was like, so am I coming over to watch like the rest of the season? And I was like, we'll talk, we'll talk. Have you seen the first season? Oh yeah, yeah. He okay. loved the first season. Yeah. Um, but it, you know, the first season ended on such a cliffhanger that he kept telling me, I didn't finish it, I didn't finish it. I'm like, no, like, <laughs> that, season, that was it. That was the, yeah. that was now you've seen it all he was like i need more <laughs> it's not just like i think it brings yeah. people to it now. like i mean me and my dad always watch a lot of similar things my dad watches a lot of like everything like he'll he doesn't care if it's hallmark or at netflix uh -huh. or anything if it's like an interesting story to him he's like I'm all so, i'm so jealous my my parents don't watch hardly anything uh they're just not like media people you know, uh, like my mom like loves to are. read. And so it's, she's more of like, that's where to connect with her. Yeah. She loves to read <laughs> and, uh, and she's also an artist. So she loves to like paint and, and things like that. But, and my, my, my dad, he's just more of an outdoors person. He loves sports. He watches a lot of sports, but, uh, mm -hmm. doesn't watch many, uh, movies or tell, uh, television. Oh, and, uh, yeah, he's like, <laughs> everything he watches, he's like, let me tell you the entire plot of this short film I watched. I'm like, all right, well, I guess I need to watch it now. <laughs> like he comes with me to Comic-Con, yeah. he holds me to the camera oh, nice. a lot of times. Like he, he has a lot of fun. That's cool. <laughs> um, well, how did you even, cause you don't watch like all the Hallmark stuff. How did you even hear about this show? Like, how did you end up watching the first season? Well, I think I got reached out to initially last season about red carpet and I had just moved so I couldn't do it. But I was like, oh, wait, is this about time travel or not? And I was like unsure if it was. And I was, mm -hmm. you know, let me just check out the first episode. So I like just happened to watch it. And I was like, oh, man, I messed up. I should have I should have tried to find my stuff and do the red carpet because time travel, I'm like automatically in, you know, any mm -hmm. kind of like back to yeah. future vibe. And so then I kept watching it and I was like, this is so different than any other Hallmark show I've ever seen. Cause I, I had watched um, Good Witch um, and I've watched, you know, some of the Christmas movies each year. Mm -hmm. uh, not like super intensely, but like, you know, uh, sure. occasionally like following yeah. along with different things. Um, and I just feel like this is completely different than anything they've ever done. Mm -hmm. Like in terms of even the quality feels like I think higher, like they, the kisses are mm -hmm. in this first episode is, <laughs> I was not prepared. Um, yeah. You know, like they're, they're really going there, I think. And I also mm -hmm. love just how much it feels like they've like planned things out. Like this feels like really just like smart. Mm -hmm. Like, like I think because it's on Hallmark Channel, sometimes it gives people get it like a wrap of like, oh, it's, it's not going to be like anything serious. And I'm like, no, this is like, mm -hmm. could be on any network. Like it's genuinely like very good. Yeah. Well, it was originally going to go to Netflix and then they brought it over. When um when the, one of the execs came over, brought it over with them, and uh, so it has a little bit more of that Netflix edge than you'd expect in Hallmark, and uh, and I should have had more faith in it. I was nervous at first because I am usually not a fan of what I call like sullen teen dramas. That's just not my. I love it. I love not them. my jam. You know. And uh and uh and so I was like, oh, I don't know, um, but uh but. I should have had more faith in it because it is uh, written the showrunners, uh, Alexander Clark and Heather Con Conkey. We've had Heather on the podcast. She's the showrunner, the main writer for, uh, for Heartland, which I enjoy and watch. And uh, so I should have had more faith in them that they could make a good show because um, Heartland is also started out about a teenager and it's not a sullen teenager show. 
Um, and it's, it's pretty well written. And, uh, so, uh, and it's kind of, I think it's cool that you have a mother daughter team at the heart of this show. And I think that's probably why this show about mothers and daughters really feels true. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I think you can feel that in there. And, uh, I think it was also a really fun show to watch. Uh, as a group Uh, it's been a long time and i don't watch that many television shows so that's probably why but it's been uh, a a long time since i i've had a show that was like a water cooler show they used to call them in the 90s water water cooler shows that that Mm -hmm. you want to you'd want to talk about and be like oh did you see that clue did you see that oh the almanac said this or the old thing and then so it made it a really fun participatory show Mm -hmm. absolutely they had sent the, I'd gotten the first four episodes early mm-hmm. and I, I actually haven't watched all four yet because, I I, I, <laughs> because I've been so busy, um, uh, partly, but, um, I, I, uh, in a way I kind of wanted to wait because that first experience all experiencing together, uh, was so fun that I, I kind of, in a way I kind of want to save that and watch it all together. But, but, um, I probably won't last until I'll probably, I'll probably. I'll tell you, especially but... after the first cliffhanger, once you keep going, like you won't be yeah, like, then you can. I, watch them, I think I stayed up till like three in the morning, yeah. <laughs> just watching them because I couldn't stop and it was yeah. so good. And then there was the more twist and twist. <laughs> but it was a good show that way. As far as participatory, I think yeah. it was fun. Mm-hmm. You know, the Absolutely. clues, the last show that for me was that way. And again, I don't watch that many shows, but um, was probably WandaVision. That was a fun show as far as participatory about like the different clues from the different eras and what was happening and and how it connected to the MCU and none of those clues went. <laughs> yeah, it didn't end up paying <laughs> off. And the, the finale, the finale episode was kind of eh, not that great, but but yeah. it was a fun experience to watch yeah. together. I think the last one I did like a lot of like deep diving into probably was like maybe Pretty Little Liars original sin. There was a like mm. a lot cool references to like the original Pretty Little Liars and to all these like slasher movies and then like little hidden things that like tease like who's really Mm -hmm. yeah ho 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 we'd like to take a second and thank our sponsor for this episode of the podcast it's the Hallmarkies Patreon do you love Hallmarkies podcast especially at Christmas do you enjoy the holiday previews recaps interviews and bonus episodes If the answer is yes, please consider supporting the Hallmarkies Patreon. We need your help to do what we do both during the Christmas season and all year round. But not only do you help a podcast led by strong, independent women by becoming a Patreon, you get to become a part of the Hallmarkies family. Starting at only $2 a month as a patron, you will have access to our Facebook Patreon group where we talk about the movies, shows, and more all year. We also have many monthly patron watch-alongs with guests like Lacey Chabert, Natalie Hall, Paul Campbell, Mary Lou Henner, and more, giving their behind-the-scenes details of their films. As a patron, you also have the chance to provide input into the podcast and even join us at different tiers. So this Christmas season, spread some cheer to the Hallmarkies Patreon and become a member today. You won't regret it. Go to patreon.com slash hallmarkies to learn more. That's patreon.com slash homeworkies. It's fun when you have a show that uh, that you can watch as sort of a group experience. It can be kind of a communal experience. That is something that television can provide that that's just not the same for movies. Yeah. I mean, maybe something like the MCU where, you know, you kind of have the clues throughout like all the different movies, maybe. But uh, but uh, I I think that... It's just a fun experience to be part of uh, a franchise that, uh, or a series that, uh, th- that's got that kind of hype, I guess, about it. It's fun. Yeah. Especially but, when you know people have put real clues in there and like, they really, mm-hmm. they're planning it. They have a plan. And I love when people plan it. Oh, they're like, it's so smart. Yeah. I mean, it's risky because then you can end up at the end being like, oh, that was so disappointing. But, uh, but I guess that's a risk you take. <laughs> I mean, I'll never forgive him for how I met your mother, but, uh, that was, the, uh, that was yeah. the biggest disappointment of my media career, <laughs> my life. <laughs> I, but, uh, 
But all right, let's talk about this episode. And we do have a preview episode that me and Casey did where we went all through season one and then did a preview of season two that is really fun that uh, you should all check out. I'll put a link uh, if you haven't listened to that. But uh, let's talk about this episode, The Space Between. And the little summary is Dell recreates traditions of the past. Alice misses her friends. Cat grapples with Jacob's mystery in the wake of losing Elliot. So overall, what did you think about this premiere? I think that it was really good. I loved the cliffhangers. I loved the like development of the characters and trying to, you know, just figure out like where everyone's at now. And I feel like yeah. they unveiled a lot of like exciting things that I'm like, mm-hmm. Ooh can't wait to see how they unfold yeah yeah i i think so i mean it it had a lot of really good stuff going on for sure um and uh it starts out with uh jacob this woman by the pond come i know it come i know it calls to you (laughs) yeah i didn't know who it is yeah i i don't know who it is too i mean they've shown that that cat was the is is the the white witch in 1814 we kind of we gotten that and um so somehow if it's related i mean i think it's pretty i i i don't know if it's clear but i feel like jacob is in 1814 do you agree i think he is yes i feel like i mean that's what that's what it seems like they're going in the direction of with with cat being like i think i know where he went but Mm -hmm. also what's up with that dog did the dog time travel yeah, well, I mean, because the dog was... travel if it's just like a Landry family thing? Hmm. Or maybe I think... just... Well, we yeah. know at least, at the very least, that Jacob jumped in after the dog. Yeah. Yeah. But did and they ever, in they... season one, see the dog? Because wasn't the dog wet when they found, they found the dog <laughs> wet? <laughs> so it'd been in the pond. So then yeah. I think Jacob was also in the pond to get yeah. the dog. And then he went back to 1814. And I think that, you know, they have this whole thing with the, the, the farm being sold and everything like that. And I think, I think that we're going to find that there's some ancestor of theirs that, uh, and that we find more about some mysterious ancestor, whether it's named Jacob or not, they uh, that was Jacob in 1814 that got the farm or, or something, something along those lines. That'd be yeah. cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so then we have uh the the cat goes in the water, Alice jumps in after her, and then Alice gets stuck. Yeah, in the in the, in the ice. I was like, Yep, I would be done. No more. <laughs> you almost died. Yeah. But also, how do you know? Like I kept thinking, like, how do you know like the person's stuck under the ice and not like Oh, I just didn't see them and they traveled. Right. That, that was lucky that she happened to like be looking just in case because yeah. she, could, she could have been like, oh, she probably time traveled. And then bam, you lost your daughter to the ice of the pond. Well, and I feel bad for these actresses because there's nothing worse than wet jeans. And when they've had to go into the, I think of all those scenes that they've had to do and like, like wet clothes are the worst, but especially wet jeans are awful. <laughs> Well, at the um at the screening, they were talking about they did like a panel at the end, and they said how like they've been in that pond so much they know the life cycle of the frogs, and like <laughs> you know they they're like yeah, the, I bet. those scenes are always like the hardest to film because it's like it's the magic of the pond, but also it's like kind of terrible being in the water there and <laughs> you know doing all those well, jumps. And those kind of ponds are so gross. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so then we find that, uh, so Elliot has left and there's a letter from him that she just leaves on the door. And this is a, he says, so I need to say goodbye. Uh, I know you said you didn't understand, but I hope you try. That's what he says. So how do we feel about Elliot? Like he basically feels like because he knew, he, he knew what was happening with this time travel thing that it's kind of controlled his life. Like he, he feel like everything's been sort of predicted and, uh, and he's been sort of controlled by the Landry women and this time travel thing. I mean, go explore the world, man. (laughs) He could have been doing all that, that whole time when they weren't there. Right. Like there was like a whole time period where like the Landry women were like not communicating. He should have traveled that. I mean, he could travel whenever. 
It's like, true. What was, funny was the um was the actor Evan Williams had said that like he also went on like his own like journey traveling and getting all tan and coming back like to the set all like you know refreshed and everyone was like mm -hmm. oh he's going on the same journey as his character <laughs> like that's funny <laughs> life in the art. I was like that's funny yeah and he uh -huh. says take care of Dell and Alice I love you I'm sorry they're like <laughs> he was like having his hot boy summer as they say yeah <laughs> and so so Kat tells Alice the pond is done with us we have to be done with it and then we get seven months later yeah, seven months yeah. time um, was what was the deal with this horse? Is that, um, uh, they kept showing the horse. Is that because, is is that because that's Colton's horse or it looks like Colton's horse? Why, why did they keep showing the horse? It seemed like to have some meaning. I think we'll get more answers in another. Uh, okay. Cause I was like, I don't remember seeing him on that horse, but it seemed to like really like when Del sees the horse, she's like, what? Yeah. I think we get Stop. more answers in the next episode. Mm, okay. <laughs> Oh, um, um so alice is going to brady's for the summer is the plan yes. and uh, she's pretty mixed has mixed feelings about it she wants to go back in the pond she she wants she says that uh that she can't stop thinking about the past and the past is calling to her yeah it's so interesting how like this story is really just about like the past and guilt and healing and like just these really like deep kind of sometimes dark you know family stories that are like I don't know it's just so compelling to watch and like see all mm -hmm. the things that they're dealing with but I wouldn't be able to not jump if I if I knew that like I could jump into a pond and time travel like that's a superpower man how are you, how are you gonna not jump yeah. and get like, there must be a reason you're allowed to do that right like why else mm -hmm. I'd like to take a second and thank our sponsor for this episode of the podcast it's Elise Murray and her exciting book Society Girl Set in the mysterious world of Oxford University's secret societies, Society Girl follows Sam, a Duke's estranged daughter, as she attempts to join the most famous club of them all, the Animo Society. Her final initiation challenge is simple. Find a man, convince him she's in love with him, and then break his heart in humiliating fashion. Hardened by her father's rejections, believing that the Animo Society is her key to his love and acceptance, Sam throws herself into making Daniel Best, her father's chauffeur and local musician, fall for her but she never counted on falling in love with him right back fans of colleen hoover anna hong and mia sheridan will love society girl a sweeping romance from best-selling novelist and screenwriter elise murray free for kindle unlimited users for a limited time go to elise murray.com slash novels slash society girl for more information or you can use the affiliate link below it would be especially tempting when you when you not only had one tragedy but two tragedies it's and to try so to close, stop it it feels like you know based off of what cat mm -hmm. has been you know feeling like she's on the right path now i'm mm -hmm. like how can you not go back like do you think that dell knows about the pond i don't know i keep wondering because like why i mean i guess none of them that's part of the thing is like none of them talk about like what's really going on like mm -hmm. they all like, their secrets to like protect each other but like and i was also thinking like technically she's not really a landry right like she is by marriage but like true she's That's not true. by blood so like i was literally just thinking like maybe like because they're married could like that now spark something that allows her to time travel too or is it just like by blood only so then like maybe she can't i have i don't know I guess yeah that's true i you wonder if um if Colton knew about the pond um if it's something that's been like passed down through the legacy of everything because remember he recognizes before he dies he recognizes cat adult cat how though i don't know but if he knew about time travel that might explain also, like, it also like watching it it's like how could someone not know about time travel? Like no one ever fell in the pond other than when mm -hmm. Jacob went missing. Like there, like there's nobody else from that family that like time travel. Like, is there anybody from like eight? But that's the thing maybe, that time traveled to another uh, time. Actually, well, we don't know if the pond can go forward or if it's only backward. Well, technically, you have to go forward, right? Because how are they getting back to their time? Oh, that's true. Oh, well, yeah, well, that's true. But, and also, wasn't there, like, I felt like there was a scene where there was, like, this mystery man, like, watching them at, like, in modern day, but he's in mm -hmm. shadows, and we're like, who is mm -hmm. that? 
Mm-hmm. Could that be someone from the past? That yes. Jumped in and yeah, went to. I don't know. <laughs> there's so many places you could go. It's like the more you talk about it, the more there's like things that come up. Like, you know, yeah, they're only time traveling to the past, but they have to go back to the future. Back to but the. This... <laughs> but that's the thing. Like, if 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 Jacob is in 1814, which we think he is. And he then passed down the legacy of the pond to all of, to his ancestry, then that would be a reason why Colton would have known and why he would have recognized Kat. But why didn't he come adult. back then? What's that? Why didn't he come back if he can time travel? The, um, uh, why Jacob didn't come back or why? Yeah, well, why? well, Colton, he, I mean, because he died. No, but Jacob if he went to the 1800s and now he knows about time travel, why didn't he just jump back into the pond and come back? Or but is he, he doesn't, the but man? the pond doesn't, he doesn't control where the pond takes him. So could it, so could that happen then that like Alice or Kat could jump in time and not be able to come back? Yeah, I think that's totally a possibility. Like, like maybe Jacob tries to jump in and it's like, this is not the time yeah. you have to stay. Yeah, I mean, because it says it will, the pond will always take you where you need to go. Yo, this pond is crazy. I didn't even know <laughs> who made this up. Is it like, like witchcraft? Is it like, I don't know, like yes. some kind of ancestor curse or some <laughs> kind of where does it come from? Yeah. Like, do you have some kind of like magic in them? I don't well, even know. So Alice is about to leave. She's gonna say goodbye to the to the pond, and she reaches in, and her bracelet comes back to her, and she sees that as like a sign. So she tells Kat that uh, that she needs to go back because she also is at this bonfire and she sees like these kind of visions of mm-hmm. teenage Elliot and teenage uh, uh, the teenagers from the past, and so mm-hmm. that's why she says that I need I need to go I need to go back. Yeah, yeah. But also yeah. like. It just makes me wonder what is Elliot hiding because we see her jump. Mm-hmm. Elliot sees her, so clearly she went back again. Maybe she goes back more and more and more. Like, how mm-hmm. do you know? Like, what if she keeps going back so many times that then she runs into herself in mm-hmm. I don't know in the time period? Yeah, I that would be that Great. would be wild. That would be wild if there's like two uh, two Alice's right and uh that we meet up with cats technically like young cat and older cat mm-hmm. so who's to say that like what if she i don't know what if they cause like a <laughs> space time like continue. A rip in the space time i yeah. don't even know i mean so elliot he comes back and uh he uh and he shows up with wine at this party that dell's throwing and uh it's like pretty awkward um and there's, there's someone had to glow up <laughs> hot boy summer, <laughs> hot boy summer. Uh, and they also notice these initials in the fireplace um so those are some ancestors that we're gonna hopefully meet. Gonna see and i kind of laughed at that because it's a big deal in heartland uh the um the the family have a this special fireplace where they they it's kind of in the place of a christening when somebody's new in the family they give them a stone in the fireplace and there's like this whole sort of kind of ceremony that they do on the show and um so it just must be a conky thing they must just love a oh, fireplace <laughs> yeah <laughs> i guess it's the tradition i maybe it's a canadian thing who knows but uh i i just thought that was kind of funny but that's a clue and uh, we're going to see those those initials come into play coming up Mm-hmm. And what what does that mean? Of course, we have the almanac. We have you know all of that. Mm-hmm. Um, so we'd like to take a second and thank our sponsor for this episode of the podcast. It's the Hallmarkies Merch Store. Are you looking for that perfect gift for the postable, hardy, or Hallmarky in your life? What about getting that T-shirt or hoodie that will help you stand out at your next holiday party? Now is the time to check out the Hallmarkies Merch Store, full of festive designs by artists like Jessica Miller. Carrie from Walmart Comics, and more. You can even have more than just shirts, but totes, cell phone cases, notebooks, mugs, and more. 
And it isn't just Hallmark. We have designs for Anna Green Gables, Man from Snowy River, The Nanny, and more. Every purchase at the merch store goes to help support the podcast and allows us to make the great content you know and love. There are frequent sales, so go to tpublic.com slash stores slash Hallmarkies or see the link in the description. That's tpublic.com slash stores slash Hallmarkies. And then, uh, and then, so Kat talks to Elliot and they, <laughs> they have a big kiss. It's very exciting. I got to tell you, watching that in the screening was really funny because after the, the both of the actors, Evan especially was like, I didn't realize that's what that kiss would look like. Like, I didn't realize like that's what we did. Like, that was a big kiss. Like, they didn't realize that's how intense the kiss was. It was, they were like. <laughs> yeah, that crazy. would be fun. I don't know if I've ever seen like a romantic scene like that with the actual actors. Uh, yeah. present. That would be they fun. They were like, whoa, that's a lot. But it was because yeah, he says i'm sorry i didn't say goodbye and there's all the music and the fireworks and everything and yeah they uh you miss so much and yeah. you can tell me about it i'm here i don't think he really wants to hear it though no. <laughs> he says like oh i'm here for you but like he left because he's tired of like being in there the weeds like he has to make a decision like do you want to know or do you not want to be involved in this mm -hmm. yeah so alice uh is He's getting more and more frustrated. It's all starting to feel like a dream, he says. And uh, Kat tells Alice, like, don't be mad at Elliot. He had to do what he had to do. And uh, and she finally tells tells Alice that they, about their, like, relationship, basically, that they had, that they tried it out and it was too much. Yeah. Yeah. I think it was, it was just like, I think the time travel thing yeah. is really like, what's the big play in there that makes it too much for everybody. We also see young Elliot trying to get the courage to ask teen cat out. Gosh, it's so painful because he's <laughs> like, I'll do it when she comes back from camp. You're too late at that point, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But Seriously. I love seeing Nick. I, I don't know. I like Nick and, and Alice. So I don't, I hope he comes back, but I don't know. Yeah. Do you think we'll see Nick again? I feel like we have to like, you know, they, I feel like the supporting like young cast or like the cast from the 90s, like mm -hmm. I think we're just going to continue seeing them throughout like the show because mm -hmm. like, right, like they're time traveling to certain times like the I think that she's going to continue going back just like at some point they have to go back to the 1800s and maybe we'll even mm -hmm. find out they go somewhere another time period or something. Yeah. I would love to see Carrie James as well back as adult Nick. I don't know if we will, but he was on Heartland as I mean, awesome. you never know. I feel like the once you're introduced into the world, like you're mm -hmm. in the world now. So yeah, come back. Yeah, I mean, I was worried that we wouldn't see much of Colton, but uh, but I think actually we'll see a, quite a you know a little bit of him come, going forward because I love Jefferson Brown and I uh, I just really like that character. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. Um, so then we have uh, oh the other thing I was gonna say was I feel like. Even when we're not time traveling, I think we'll see them because it seems like they're they're also adding in an element of like, sort of like memories that yeah. we see of them, which we see right. in this episode too. Flashbacks. Like flashbacks, sort of like their memories, so to speak. So yeah. those, I think that everyone will still be back. So then Dell says, I want to build back our relationship. And, and Kat tries to tell her about that she knows where Jacob is, that she thinks. And Dell says that uh, we have to accept what happened because there's no changing it. And so it makes me think that she doesn't know about the pond. Mm. But uh, but she, at the very least, of course, I don't think knows that Alice and Kat know about the pond, at the very least. Yeah, I don't know. You so far, Del hasn't done anything really that, like, I feel like some of her parts in general, like even in season one, have been a little boring like you know mm -hmm. she's just kind of like home with yeah the and doing the things in town whereas like i, I it's I true like, like the whole thing with byron that was that was nothing and yeah. uh and so it's it, the most intriguing part is does she know does she not know but it they haven't given her a ton to do i agree with that yeah mm -hmm. i agree with that um so then uh elegant he's gonna text her back he's just about to say i shouldn't i should have kept kissing you last night 
Mm-hmm. He's almost going to do it. And then, uh, and then uh, we also have going on in this episode, we have this woman has sold this, uh, this house, Evelyn Gold- Goodwin mm-hmm. uh, has sold her house. I mean, she's passed away. She put the Herald in the will. Um, so Kat and uh, Ellie go up there and, uh, and they find a painting in the woman's house that looks just like cat from like the mm-hmm. from 1814 or my catherine 1814 mm-hmm. crazy so, so she that's had huge. to go back in time yeah so that's big and uh, alice says we need one more jump mm-hmm. and uh and so then they are so they're jumping and uh we get our our big cliffhanger so alice uh, is back but then cat we don't know where it looks like 1814 or somewhere cowboy ish kind of and she gets shot everybody in the theater was oh! like oh. <laughs> yeah that must have been that fun was a good one. oh my god cow yeah that's the- a cliffhanger yeah what a cliffhanger oh i loved it <laughs> yeah can't wait to see what happens next for the rest of the season i think it's Mm -hmm. gonna be some good stuff Mm -hmm. just really like i think we're gonna be seeing a lot of like elliot going back and forth of like do i want to be involved in this do i not but like how do i still be in the family yeah like cat i've been continuing going down the rabbit hole of like where's jacob which she's been doing and then alice maybe trying to figure out like how do i balance like being a real person like mm-hmm. in the real world like maybe being with Dell yeah. and you know the family and everything while also like missing the past and like wanting to be with young Nick I don't mm-hmm. know I think that she wants I mean, to mean somebody's going to have to go to 1814 and save Cat now oh. she's been shot can she though because look they got ripped apart and and Alice got sent back to the 90s so like mm-hmm. can they even can she go to the 1800s I don't know I don't know. That's the pawn takes you where you need to go. I guess you need to go get shot. Oh my gosh. (laughs) Yeah. I don't know. I I mean, I've been looking through and I still have yet to see, they've been very good about on the IMDb hiding any adult Jacobs, you know, casting or any casting. They've been Mm -hmm. very, very good about that. So we haven't, I mean, we don't know. We could see Jacob in 18. I mean, the pawn can take them anywhere. So he could be an old man in 1814 we just we just don't know like where the pawn took him or he could be this a boy in 1814 um mm-hmm. we we just don't know what's going on so it's crazy yeah 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 <laughs> well if you were gonna give this episode one to ten uh what would you give it i think i would give it an eight because yeah. there was a lot of setup but mm-hmm. i think it sets the stage for like what's coming. And I think that finale moment, that cliffhanger yeah. was crazy. So I yeah. think maybe eight out of 10. What about you? Yeah, I agree. That's what I was going to say eight as well. It had everything you want, I think, in a premiere of the show and it's going to get people talking and it's going to be. So yeah, I really enjoyed it. Uh, and uh, and I'm excited for a new season. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, well let us know what you think of this first episode we'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments or on twitter and uh, kristen where can people find you well first of all thank you for having me i love this show so it's so great to talk with you about it um and i feel like i have more theories now after we talked than i than i came with um but you can find me everywhere at kmaldo k-a-y-m-a-l-d-o or on my website, popcultureplanet.net, where we cover the world of entertainment while also shining a light on representation and inclusion. And um, I also have interviews with the cast um, of The Way Home Season 2 on my pages if you want to check them out. Great. And uh, you can find me at Rachel's Reviews, all of our social media, iTunes, YouTube, and on Rotten Tomatoes. So check that out. Also, make sure you're following the podcast, A Homework is Pod, Homework is Podcast all of our social media. And if you are listing on iTunes, please leave your ratings and reviews for both of our podcasts. We sure appreciate it. And if you're watching on YouTube, please give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. We appreciate that so much. We also have our playlist with all of our The Way Home recaps and the preview, like we said. So check that out. And we have our patron group, which is the best way you can support us and the merch store. And we're still working on maybe getting some uh, The Way Home inspired merch, but 
we'll let you know about that. But uh, check out the merch store. And uh, thanks so much. And uh, we'll talk to you later. Bye.